Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1533. Hey, we got to see how to count the number of products in a column. And we're going to see how to do it with Excel, DAX Formulas, Power Query, and even Office 365. That means we'll get to see how to use the Excel spreadsheet function count ifs, a standard pivot table, Power Queries Group By, DAX, which is Excel Power Pivot, and Power BI Desktop Count Rows functions. And we will see how to use a pound symbol if you have Office 365 to take advantage of Excel's new dynamic arrays. Now, what's so cool about a video like this is yes, some of the topics like count ifs and pivot tables are simple Excel topics. But if we know the five different methods of accomplishing a counting task across all the different tools, standard Excel, Power Query, DAX, and dynamic arrays, if you know how to do it across all these tools, then you have real Excel power. All right, we're going to go to the sheet 1533. The first example is, from this column, we need to count how many of each products there are. Now, if we're going to use a spreadsheet function like count ifs, well, we first need a unique list. So I'm going to highlight this column, Control-C, come over here, right click, and I'm going to paste values only. Now, with that range highlighted, I'm going to go up to Data, over to Data Tools, and remove duplicates. It says that it found four unique items. And of course, one of them is the field name. So I'm going to add some bold. Now we want to count, Control-Enter, Control-B, Enter. And now we'll use count ifs. Criteria range, this is an Excel table. So I hold my cursor at the top. And when I see my black downward pointing arrow, I click to get table name and field name in square brackets, comma. Then I highlight. A relative cell reference, that's the condition for counting. Now count ifs can do its work. It goes through here and counts all the quads. Close parentheses. Control Enter, because I want to put the formula in the cell and keep the cell selected. Now I point to that fill handle there with my crosshair cursor or angry rabbit cursor. Double click and send it down. Be sure to go to the last cell and hit F2. I'm verifying that all the cell references are pointing in the right place. Now, when would we want to use Excel spreadsheet formulas? Well, the main advantage to Excel spreadsheet formulas is if I change something, like I change it to quad, watch what happens here. When I hit Enter, instantly formulas update. That's how you know that you want to use Excel spreadsheet formulas. Formulas update instantly. Now I'm going to Control Z to undo that. Now I've grouped these, so I'm going to collapse, open up the next. And now we want to see a standard pivot table. I click in a single cell. This is a proper data set with field names, records, and empty cells all the way around. I go up to Insert, Pivot Table, or I can use the keyboard, Alt N V. It has the table name of that proper data set. I do not want it on a new worksheet. Existing location, cell I10, click OK. Now watch this. I can simply drag products down to rows, and instantly I get a unique list. So that's a big advantage for the pivot table. It'll always find a unique list. Then instead of using a formula, I click and drag product. Because it's text, when I drop it into values, it instantly defaults to counting. The advantage of the standard pivot table, of course, is that it is easy to create this solution. The disadvantage, if I come over here and type quad, Enter, it doesn't update instantly. Now, most of the time, that is not a problem. I can simply right click and refresh, and instantly everything updates. Now I'm going to Control Z to undo the refresh, Control Z to undo that data change. So standard pivot tables, easy, but they don't refresh instantly. I'm going to collapse. Now Power Query, if we wanted this solution in the spreadsheet, I would not use Power Query. I would use standard pivot table or count ifs. But it's important to know how to do this, grouping, creating a unique list 
and doing some group operation like counting in Power Query because this might be a step in a larger query. So we'll see how to do this in Power Query. Now, we have to have an Excel table. If this was a standard Excel range, we couldn't bring it into Power Query. Now, where is Power Query? Data. Get and transform, that is Power Query. I have to bring it into the Power Query editor to do my reporting or transformation. So I'm going to click Bring into Power Query from Table and Range. This is the Power Query editor. I see my table. I definitely want to give it a different name than the Excel table name from the spreadsheet. I want to call this Count Products. When I hit Enter, that becomes the name of this query. And it will become the name of the Excel table that's delivered as a solution to the Excel spreadsheet. Now, it's very easy to create a group by report in Power Query. I select the column I want. Since I'm counting, I want a unique list, and then I want to count. I can either use this big Group By button up here, or right click, Group By, the Group By dialog box. Which column or columns, if I did advanced and selected multiple columns, which column do I want the unique list from? Product. Now, by default, it's set up to count. There's the word count. There's the operation. If I wanted to do some other group by calculation like add, I would have to pick a different aggregator like sum, and then I would have to tell it which column. But by default, group by is set up when I click OK to group together all the records that had quad and count them, group together all the Carlotas, and count them. Now I can close and load, close and load two. I want to choose to put this on the existing worksheet. M10, click OK. Now same thing with Power Query. If I were to change this to Quad, I would have to come over and right click Refresh in order to get it to update. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. Now I'm going to ungroup this and DAX. Now DAX, D-A-X, Data, Analysis, Expressions. Expressions is a synonym for formulas. And this will work in Power BI and Excel Power Pivot. Same thing as Power Query. If we're going to use this in Power Pivot to access the Count Rows function, I have to have the data in an Excel table. Now, if I were simply wanting a result in the spreadsheet, I would use count ifs or a standard pivot table. But if we're building a data model and a larger Power Pivot or Power BI solution, then knowing how count rows works, and in essence, count rows is a type of count ifs function, but in DAX. All right, so I'm going to bring this into Power Pivot. And over here in the Tables group, I can add this Excel table to the data model. Now, this is the Power Pivot for Excel window. We have one table. We can see this tab right here. Below the table, this is called the measure grid. This is where we can create our formulas. Click in a cell. You actually have to create your formulas up in the formula bar. Now we're going to call this formula count because it will count based on whichever column we drop into the row area for the data model pivot table. And I have to type a colon and equal sign. And then I simply use count rows. The name of this table is F sales, so I type F sales and tab. Now this is what's amazing about DAX is that's the full table. I don't have to specify a condition or criteria because count rows will automatically count how many records are showing when this table is filtered. And we'll see that the data model pivot table will actually internally filter this table. But that's our formula when I hit Enter. Now, this count of 10 is because it's counting all the records. But when we drop it into the pivot table, we'll see that it will count the correct number of products. Now, I want to create a pivot table from the Power Pivot for Excel window. So I click Pivot Table. That brings me back to the Excel window. This is a different dialog box. I have to click Existing. Then I have to click Collapse. Then I want this in Q10. Click OK. Click OK. Now, it looks like a standard pivot table, but it's definitely not. This is a data model pivot table. We can see here's the one table we have in the data model. 
And there's our formula count. But now I'm going to drag products. It looks like a standard pivot table, but when I drag count down here, what is happening internally in that count rows formula is Aspen is a condition or criteria from the row area of the pivot table. And when it flows into the formula, it serves as a filter. And the entire table is filtered down to just rows with Aspen. That's why count rows counts how many rows are showing in the filtered table. Two, when it gets down here, criteria flows in to that formula. It instructs the table to be filtered down to just the records with Carlota. And it gets a count rows answer of three rows. Now, again, this solution would be in a larger data model project that you were doing. But that's how you count from the given conditions in a data model pivot table. Now I'm going to collapse this. And now we're going to try Office 365. Now I have Office 365. I'm going to type products, tab, count. And I'm going to highlight both cells and Control B. Now we're going to use some dynamic arrays. And remember, when we did this solution, we actually manually had to create this unique list. But if you have Office 365, and currently I'm shooting this at the end of 2018, if you have Office 365 Insider Edition, then you have these functions I'm going to use. Otherwise, Microsoft says that if you have Office 365, these functions will be available in early 2019. But here it is. Equals, I'm going to use the sort function. And then I'm going to use the unique function. Now the unique, I simply highlight this column. And unique will extract a unique list, but it's doing it as a formula. So if we change anything here, this list will automatically update and automatically spill. Now I'm going to close parentheses. The unique part is just giving me the unique list. And I want it to sort alphabetically, so I wrapped it with sort. Watch what happens when I hit Enter. You've got to be kidding me. It's spilling. If I come over here and change this to Sunspot, as soon as I hit Enter, because these are formulas, they update instantly. Now I'm going to Control Z. Now here's how we get count ifs, which is not a dynamic array. But we want it to spill just like sort and unique equals count ifs. I highlight the same range. Everything so far is the same as our first count ifs criteria. Everything's the same so far, but watch what happens when I use a pound symbol. That pound symbol says, look at the very first cell in the spilled array, and then get whatever that array formula spills, meaning if I highlight this and hit the F9 key, you can see it's delivering to count ifs multiple answers. Now, when we have multiple answers inside of criteria one and count ifs, it instructs count ifs to deliver three answers. This is called a function argument array operation, instructing count ifs to deliver multiple answers. Control Z, close parentheses, and Enter. Now, if I come over here and change this to Sunspot instantly everything updates. One other thing about spilled arrays. If I click in the top cell and look up in the formula bar, I see a regular colored formula. But if I click in any of the cells below, it's grayed out. That means that formula is not living in the cell. The formula just lives in the top cell and then spills the values below. That's why over here, we had to use pound to instruct count ifs to see not just the cell, but the actual spilled array. Enter. You can see the same thing over here for count ifs. The formula only lives in the top cell, and the rest are grayed out, meaning they're just spilling in the cells below. And I don't know, this version right here kind of combines the best of count ifs, which means spreadsheet formulas, and the pivot table. So going forward in Excel history, I imagine that for reports like this, this one's going to be pretty amazing because it solves that pivot table you have to refresh problem. 
All right, so we saw Office 365 Excel dynamic array formulas. We saw the DAX formula count rows. We saw Power Query group by a standard pivot table, and even our standard Excel spreadsheet formula count ifs. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video. Thank you.